Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this class tutorial, I want to make a parametric uh, series of shelves by just drag and dropping a series of points using Kangaroo. As you can see here, I'm changing this uh, the location of the point and it's updating uh, the shelves. Uh, I can also go here and uh, change the number of divisions to maybe four. Uh, reset the Kangaroo and control more points. And also I can change the number of division. This one is for four shell rows. So I can also control the last one. And as you can see here, it's really easy to control the overall shape. So we're going to learn how to use a Kangaroo to do that uh, in Grasshopper. Okay, let's get started from scratch. I'm going to delete everything. Uh, go to the shaded mode. And first what I want to do is to go to the curve and use the primitive uh, rectangle to draw a rectangle in Grasshopper. So I'm going to just use this rectangle. And to get started, I'm going to use an XZ plane. And let's give a number slider to this XY size. So this is going to change the length and the height of this parametric shelf. Okay. Uh, after we have done this, uh, I'm going to use this uh, utility explode to explode the rectangle into uh, segments. And as you can see, we have four line segments. And from the sets, I'm going to use list item to pick one of these segments. For example, uh, we can go add plus to find the second edge, which is going to be the one we want to use. Okay, to learn it easier, let me explain what, what I want to do. First, I'm going to divide this uh, into a series of points. For example, assume that this is the division. Uh, then I'm not going to select the first and the last one. And I'm going to focus on the points which are divided on the line. And we're going to use a uh, grab in kangaroo to move these points on this line. And then we just want to produce this uh, lines to make the divisions. Then we're going to again divide that into a series of points and find the length and make the line uh, in the division. So uh, let's go to the curve and use this division to divide this curve. Uh, assume we want to start from two to four, maybe number of divisions. Okay. Okay. Now what I want to do is to uh, divide this into two groups. First, it's going to be the start and the end. So we have them in another uh, container and we also need the points uh, on the curve in another container. So to do that, I'm going to go to the sets sequence and use the call index. Uh, the call index, uh, I usually use this technique to get rid of the start and the end. Uh, if you give an index of zero to the index, uh, index as input, you can see that it's going to delete the first one. Then I usually uh, copy paste this, I reverse the list, because the, if you assume this is like zero, one, two and three and four, uh, we delete the first one and then we reverse it to make this zero, one, two, three, and then we delete the zero. So we just have the points inside it. So this technique is going to help you to have this uh, easily by just using two call indexes. Okay, this is going to be the points on the curve. And then we need the start and the end. We can simply just go to the curve and use this start uh, endpoint component here and uh, give it to the line. And now we have the start, the points on the line and the end. Okay, so this is going to help us. But if you just want to also sort them, let me explain this, this is going to be helpful if you want to learn it. Uh, if I turn on the point list from the preview, you can see this is going to be 0, 1, 2. And that is because we reverse the list from here. So if you reverse it again and just move this a little bit here and bake the point list, you can see it's going to be 0, 1, 2. So that is really helpful to say that we want the start here manage the data really easier. Uh, these are the start 0, 1, 2 and the end. Okay, let's just get uh, rid of everything 
except the rectangle. And what we want to do is to only control these points in Kangaroo. So I'm going to go to the Kangaroo plugin and in the main use this solver. So I'm going to connect the solver and use this grab component which is really useful and this lets you drag can uh, kangaroo particles which are points in rhino viewports really easy so i'm going to just add this to the goal object uh, remember if you only have this grab to the solver it's not going to run but uh, because we want to reset the things we just want to give a button to the reset uh, every time we change the division we have to reset that also and now we just have to make a goal for the points uh, to do that, you can use this goals uh, on and on curve. So we just say we want to uh, keep a series of points on a given curve. So I want to keep these points. The curve is going to be here. And I'm going to give this a really high number for the strength because this is going to help us to not move these points in other directions and I'm going to use the shift key to add it to the goal object reset and as you can see here if I connect the points to the vertices uh, and turn off everything just reset that you can see that you can move these points up and down easily on this point uh, you can also go to the kangaroo uh, utility dot display if you want to see the points you just give them a bluish color and move that up and down okay so that's really easy we can now uh, if we for example want to increase or decrease the division we just have to reset this and now we have the number of divisions okay now that we have the points it's really easy we just have to go to the curve and use this line SDL get the start from here uh, the direction is going to be the X direction uh, I'm going to make the direction expression minus X because I want to make it in the minus X direction and the length is obviously uh, if I go and turn this on you see that this was the first edge and this was the second edge so just go to the uh, params menu and uh, connect a number to this and it's going to give you the length that's really easy and bring it here and that's how easy you can just divide that if I want to add the divisions I just reset the kangaroo and move this the divisions up and down uh, okay now that I have this just turn off the plane also uh, I want to divide these lines uh, into equal divisions and then bring them up to make these lines right uh, we also need uh, need this line so if I have these lines here I'm going to give it to a line container from the list item this edge and bring it forward and uh, we can just put them into one container this is the first one use the shift key to add the second one and be sure to check this out if it's not in two different groups if you see like a group in zero and a group in like zero zero that means they are not added into one group just flatten the curves and then give it into one container okay now that we have them here we just want to give this a division so I'm going to go to the curve and use this divide curve a number of division because we have four uh, I'm going to say um, parms menu and use this gene pool it's actually a group of number sliders so if we have four points uh, four lines we have to also make this uh, four number sliders and this is because this is going to be the division maybe we just want to divide this into two or three uh, we have to put the decimals to zero because we don't want to have decimals and we want to say division from one to five for example and now you can see that this is going to change the division of one uh, for the first one one is uh, one means that we don't have any divisions here okay so you can simply just divide it here and now we just have to draw a line STL okay 
the direction is going to be in the Z direction. Uh, what I want to do here is to use again the endpoints from these lines. Let's put the start in the container here. Uh, okay, we have a problem because uh, the start from this one is here and the start for these lines are here. So I think that we have to go back and pick the point. We had this for the start. Okay, I'm going to bring it forward. And we also had the divisions after the kangaroo. So I'm going to put that here. And again, I'm going to put them into one point container. So this is the first one. Use the shift key to add it. And again, check that out if they are in one group. That's okay. And now we have uh, four points. What I want to do is to find the distance from the first one to the second and just draw if we have any divisions, draw that in the Z direction. Again, find the distance here, draw the division uh, or the line in the Z direction. And uh, also this one. Uh, and I think that we have to also have the last one, right? Because we wanted to draw this one. So let's just bring the point we produced here. Use the shift key to add the two here. And now we have all the points. Again, I usually double check if they are in one group and that's okay. Yes, we have them in one group. Okay, uh, now that we have that here, uh, we wanted to find it, the distance between these. Uh, you can actually do different things to find that. Uh, one is to shift list these points. Uh, I mean, if this is like 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, if we shift list this, it's going to be like 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then uh, the distance is going to be between 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, till the end, right? So this is one of the ways we can do that another way is to deconstruct this point from the z perspective uh, i mean if i check that out uh, this is going to be the z perspective and find the difference between that let me explain uh, the second concept because i think it's a new tool you can learn so let's just go to the vector uh, deconstruct a point And we have the Z components here. And in the math, there is a uh, tool called Relative Differences. Let's check that out. So the rela Relative Difference between this one is like 14. This one is like 27. Yes, 14, 27 till the end. And... Uh, the problem here is that we have a zero here, so it's not going to draw anything for the first one. Actually, we want this to the uh, be for the first one, right? So what you have to do is to get rid of the zero here, right? Uh, you can do that by using a call index here or a call index here. It doesn't matter because we just have to get rid of the zeros. Uh, let's just do that after we have the relative difference. Call index delete the first and now we have that okay uh, give that to the length and because the first data is in groups we just have to graph this up that's okay if you don't know about this flatten or graph thing uh, be sure to watch the video uh, you can search in, uh, on our YouTube channel called a uh, flatten graph or you can enroll in our course and learn it uh, like in the data management section, we have several lessons about uh, data management, okay? So we just grafted this, so each point goes into one group, and you can see that's okay. We can turn off everything. The only thing we need here are these lines, and also these lines. If I bake it, you can see that we have them here, the divisions, and that's it. Uh, so now we can just turn off everything. And you can see that this is going to be the number of division of the first one, the second one, the third, and the last one. Uh, we can simply move that up and down. And that's really easy. If you wanted to change the number of the divisions to maybe 
three, reset it, and again, move it up and down. Okay, now that we have this, if you change that to number of divisions to three, because we have three rows, uh, remember to change also the gene pool to three. It's going to be the first one, the second one, and the last one, right? And now if I want to make a series of frames from this, uh, first I have to make this into a series of parts. I'm going to find the parts where I'm going to intersection physical, a surface split, a surface split. The surface I want to split is this rectangle and the curves are going to be all of these lines. So let's just put them into one container and flatten that because you can, uh, you can see that they are in different groups here. Uh, flatten this and give it to the curves, okay. Uh, we have the fragments now. It's really easy to change the fragments. And now you can start offsetting. For example, I can connect a curve to the fragments and get the borders. I can use a curve offset to make an offset, for example. Uh, the distance is outward, so I'm going to make it minus six. And now I can loft them together. If you want to uh, find, uh, find the loft between these two boundaries, this one has to be also grafted because when you offset a curve, the data is in groups, but this one is not. How can you know if it's in group or not? You just be sure to turn on the display uh, fancy wires. Uh, this, means, uh, uh, this means it's in groups. This means it's not. Uh, when you hover on here, you can see it's like eight uh, curves uh, written down here. But when you hover on groups, it's uh, writing these numbers, which means they are in groups. And these zeros can just be deleted by right clicking and using the simplify and that's it. Okay, now that we have that and let's just graph and simplify that too. What I usually do is to put them into one container with a shift key and see if they are in groups of two. That means I'm lofting these two together. So this one with this one and this one with this one. Just loft that. Uh, you can even extrude that in the y direction if you want to give it some thickness. And you can uh, connect a surface from the params menu to the offset to make the windows. That's it. So that's really easy. You can see I can drag and make this happen. The error is not really that important because uh, after you release it, it's going to be fixed. You can give it different thicknesses. Maybe we just want to bring it outwards. So I'm going to say minus six. And I can bake that into layer one and bake this into layer two and have it in Rhino. So you can use it in your project and that's it. Also, if you want to learn how to divide uh, the rectangle into a series of random rows, as you can see here, I can change the rows and also uh, give it a seed and a jitter. So I'm going to also explain this in a new tutorial. Uh, you can check out our website. I'm going to put this lesson below this free tutorial so you can check that out easier and thanks for watching remember to like this video subscribe to our channel so you get notified about our new lessons and see you next time bye